Hello and welcome to Thailand. Stick with me, I'm gonna do some enduro riding today for the first time in my life. Let's see how it goes. So this is what we're riding today. We're riding some Honda CRS, 300 CRS. The gray one is mine. That one's a little bit beat up. We've got um, two guys today riding with us. Uh, we've got a chap from Germany who um, actually lives on the island like six months a year. So he basically says to the tour guides, like every single time we've got sort of people to ride with, he's going to come down and sort of join us. And there's also a chap from uh, South Africa. So both guys have a lot of enduro experience, off-road experience. I live in England, so I really don't to be fair. So. We'll see how it goes. Um, probably gonna just hang at the back, learn the ropes. I've literally like never been on an enduro bike before. Anybody that sort of followed the channel, I was gonna do the Ducati off-road course, but I injured my back after the NC500. So this is the first time doing this. So we'll see how it goes. For someone that's never done enduro, that's quite a steep learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> Wowzers. Trial by fire. Yeah. You know, when I booked like the beginners enduro, I was yeah. like, yeah, a bit fucking. Okay. Bit of that. <laughs> your, no, your man no. takes up the mountain. And <laughs> no, what if we told you that is the beginners enduro? It's the way, but I'll go back there. So that's got to lead back to the hotel somewhere. Yeah, but that we have pictures next to the road. I mean, and we know how your track records with pictures are. Yeah, yeah. So after a quick drink, we got back to it. I must admit, the camera doesn't do it much justice. Gradients, up and down, and the general terrain is a lot more difficult than it looks on the actual camera itself. Try to keep up with the guys in the front. They're much better riders than me, but I'm gritting down and just pressing on. So this is the next part of the track. We're going down the stairs. Oh, this is that's easy. Over that, through the water, up the waterfall, yeah. and then back to the road. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll never complain about <laughs> potholes again on the road. For sure. So we continue to press on. We're about two hours into the ride now. Legs are getting tired. Fitness levels are depleting. I'm starting to make a few mistakes. I'm finding I'm losing the front wheel, regardless how much power or if I'm stood on the forks. The front wheel's bumping around everywhere. I just don't have that experience at the moment just to avoid trouble. The guys are giving me some pretty good pointers, particularly on the downhill. Getting me to use my engine instead of brakes.
I've had two crashes at this point. Unfortunately, I'm not captured it on camera. But I've never actually crashed a bike before, so it plays with your mind a little bit. Definitely trying just to block the potential risk of falling or injury out of my head and just concentrate my riding. Oh, this is tough. This is tough as shit. Alright guys, oh god, I'm just taking a break, this is really really uh, really challenging, really difficult. Oh guys, right, so, just finished. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to sum that up, to be honest. Um, we're out three hours. Um, I don't know how to sort of <laughs> sum that up. So, the two guys I was with, um, got chatting to them, and both of them are quite advanced, uh, enduro sort of motocross riders. One's just done, two weeks in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia and uh, the German chaps you know just uh he's a local here so goes out with the guys pretty much all the time so I, I would describe them personally both as quite advanced enduro riders and um, that was anything bar a beginner enduro some of the stuff we were going on like I hope because my GoPro ran out of battery I was like trying to get it on and on and get all the footage but uh, I hope I haven't reviewed the footage. Hopefully, I've got some of the, the harder bits and uh, the easy, the easy sort of gravel road bits. But oh, I, I had a few offs there. I probably had about three offs. One particularly bad. My my left arm is killing me. I'm struggling to like clench your fist. So uh, do you know when you're just like you know your you know your level? That was like well above my level. Um, first time ever on enduro, and I, I thought some of those tracks were like well above what I should have been doing but that's Thailand they don't check your skill level or experience can you ride a geared bike yeah good enough get on let's go um, but the two guys I was with really helped me out uh, picked the bike up quite a few times but yeah I've really <laughs> I've really jacked my arm in I had a really big off and left landed right on my left elbow going up like a really rutted gradient so uh, a little bit sore a bit of paracetamol maybe a couple of beers and I'll be uh, I'll be good to go but yeah awesome experience humbling humbling and uh, an eye-opener in regards to uh yeah the the level i want to get to and, and the training i'll have to do in order to get there but yeah good enjoyed it enjoyed it i'm gonna go meet casey up now and go have a drink in the shade and maybe a little swim oh that was hard Right, so we are now at a place called Club 79, which is a beach club in Koh Samui. Um, booked some trips for tomorrow, which will really be good. Uh, booked like a snorkeling boat, speedboat trip over to uh, the like National Marine Park here, about an hour away on boat. Um, all the way out in the distance there. So yeah, so we're just going to chill out at the beach club today. We've been so lucky with the weather at the moment. Um, we've come in literally rainy season. Uh, reading all the reviews, everyone was like, pretty much going to like rain every single day, but it's not rained once. It's been sunny. 
really, really nice. So yeah, we're kicking it here. And as you can see, um, we've, you know, this is the best bit about coming to Thailand. It's minimum spend a uh, thousand and one thousand, like one and a half thousand bar, which is like 30 pounds, British pounds, 40, $40, something like that, at US dollars. Um, minimum spend, and then you get like one of these, one of these like sofa beds by the pool. And yeah, as you can see, and uh, there's some weird dancing going on, but um, as you can see, it's a huge beach club. I think it's a hotel as well. But pool bar, DJ, all types of private bars. Got beach down here as well. All the staff are amazing. Um, yeah, super friendly, really nice staff. So yeah, we're gonna chill here for a couple of hours and uh, yeah, catch up with you in a bit. So we've got some sushi, some calamari, some nachos, no, tacos, chips, more sushi, some drinks. I think this is all like literally like 15 pounds or something like that. It's not a lot at all. What's up? Just right. Hey. Oh, I was just going to sit down to have a bit of a chat with you guys about um, the enduro today. It was, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was quite an experience. Quite an experience. Um, so I booked a three hour beginners enduro. And like I say, um, I don't know how much sort of content i've not actually reviewed any of the content yet so i don't know quite what um i've captured or not but i sort of just wanted to sit down and, and run through <laughs> today so right i'm not going to talk to death about this i'll try and get this like wrapped up in like a minute or two but um i booked a three hour enduro in Koh Samui today um meant to be sort of beginners so classic thailand style what what you're asked is pretty much you know can you ride a geared bike don't worry the experience is for all skill levels blah 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 good kit you know a bit light on the protective kit got some like proper motocross boots some knee defenders um like a chest and back brace and that was it really like uh, a bell mx9 motocross helmet and some goggles yeah i mean look I don't have any off-road experience, to be honest. Um, people that have followed the channel will know uh, filming this in 1st of November today. So I think it was like August. I was meant to go to Ducati in Wales to do the off-road training after the NC500. I've injured my back at the time, so I cancelled that experience. I thought it would be like a nice step into just go com predominantly coming from road. Never really done green laning before or any off-road, but I'll quickly, very quickly... You know, you know when you're just like, you know your comfort level and you know what, what you can do that's thrilling, that's challenging, and then when you're just in, uh, you know, you're just in harm's way, like you, you like shouldn't be there. I think it's quite apparent, like after about 20 minutes, we've gone through the roads, we'd gone up, like started climbing the mountain, but it was still all concrete paths. And then we got into some like straight away, like, 30 degree, like heavy boulder, huge ruts, like very, very challenging scrambles. Um, so yeah, straight away I was like, I feel very out of my depth. Then I had three, three offs, one bad. Um, I'm really gutted. I've just been looking through some of the GoPro footage and I don't think I captured any of the offs today. Two of them were literally just like scrambling up like deep ruts, losing the front wheel a bit, and then just like 
basically stalling the bike, just not enough revs to keep going. There was one in particular which was pretty, pretty like, pretty painful. And just I lost the front wheel and the bike almost came back on top of me, and I smashed my left elbow first into the ground without protection and. Only now, after about probably about four hours after finish, I'm just being able to actually clench a fist now. But when I first did it, I was a little bit worried that I've I've injured my my elbow slash arm. I was thought like, uh oh, lots to learn. Um, challenging as well, just because I've never been taught like what to do downhill, like use use the engine to slow down, don't use brakes. This is when you should use brakes. This is when you should apply front back throttle you know haven't really been taught and it's a completely different world um on like clay and gravel than it is just on the road completely different thing altogether so but yeah it was a bit it's a bit hairy today it's a little bit scary as well to be honest yeah i've had a whiskey sour and some paracetamol to try and get rid of some of this pain <laughs> But uh, it's good, and I like having the channel because I don't think if I didn't have the channel, I might not have done it today. But having the channel and filming this stuff just pushes me to do things that um, maybe I wouldn't if I didn't. So, yeah, I'm glad I did it. I hope you enjoy it, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the footage of Thailand. Uh, morning, guys. So, the morning after, oh, I am sore today. Um, that last like off that I had yesterday in the enduro was all on my left side so I've woken up this morning I feel like I've been hit by a bus. My left arm's all swollen I'm still struggling to make a fist. My calf is all wrecked and bruised and it doesn't show anything but my left my left foot's all swollen and like this the little toe. Oh my god <sighs> I'm creaky on the best of mornings let them crash in about three or four times on the bike. <laughs> oh dear, maybe I'm getting too old for this stuff. Maybe um, maybe I need to leave the enduro stuff for braver men than me and I'll just stick to pottering around the city on my bike. But we'll see. Get some breakfast, a couple of coffees down the neck definitely need it i need to get some food in my stomach because i nipped to the pharmacy yesterday and just bought a load of cocodamol and paracetamol just in case i feel like a bag of spanners today which i do so i'm glad i did to get some uh, food in my belly so i can take some painkillers and then hobble around the, the beach for the rest of the day <laughs> all right cool all right let's get going So we've arrived in Pig Island. It took about half an hour to get here on the longboat. It's actually quite a, quite a nice ride actually with all the wind, it was nice and cool. And yeah, we're in Pig Island here. It's nice and busy. Everyone's staring at pigs and stuff. It's amazing what people do as tourists when they go abroad. It's like nobody wants to see pigs in England on a smelly farm, but then you come to Thailand and everyone pays loads of money to come see some pigs, but when in Rome, but uh, yeah, I'll show you, show you what pigs I've got here. 
and then also go for a dip because it's actually a beautiful island it's really nice actually baking hot hot day hot day but i'm not going to complain this time next week i'll be back in manchester in the cold rain so i make the most of it whilst i'm here see this little guy and everyone's feeding them in these little trays in the foods I've been coming to Thailand for, oh God, I hate it. it's gonna make me start to feel old now, but about 17 years, 16, 17 years. First came out when I was 18. Um, been about back about four or five times since then. It's one of my favorite places in the world for loads of different reasons, but it's just obviously like the natural beauty here is just amazing. Um, the Thai people and the Thai culture, just the nicest people genuinely nice not nice because they want your money just genuinely nice people the country is absolutely stunning and you know what i really love about here is um it's just you don't realize in the west how much you're sort of controlled and decisions are taken out of your hand and don't get me wrong i'm all for sort of health and safety and protecting people and all the rest of it but i think we go overboard in the west um thailand is kind of like if you want to go do something do it if you want to ride motorbikes or scooters with no helmets or no protection gear you can if you injure yourself it's on you there's not all these waivers and health and safety and you know like you know handrail guards need to be a certain height and all of that shenanigans like we went for a, that hike yes uh, the other day and and yeah it's a little bit sketchy but it wasn't ruined. If you want to climb it, climb it. If you don't want to climb it, don't. Um, you know, without rattling on, we, Katie and myself went on a, a hike in Bolton or something the other week and they shut the entire path because it was a bit wet and rainy. It's like, come on, like, let people make their own decisions and their own tolerances to, to risk. Don't control people to that point. So yeah, I, I love Thailand for that. Um, see everyone's out kayaking. So yeah, we're gonna spend about 20 minutes here. 20 minutes here, get some lunch, and then head off to the next place. But yeah, Thailand guys, highly, highly recommend it for those that haven't been before. Definitely go, definitely go. You can't go wrong. Um, from the UK, yeah, a little bit expensive to get out here. But once you're out, you know, you can stay in four or five star resorts for 30 pounds to 100 pounds per night, foods, cheap if you have you know thai food we ate in a restaurant the other night it was like something like five quid for two people to have like beautiful pad thai so yeah really really nice something for everybody out here really something for every everybody and experience something that's completely um just completely different to the west and sort of europe it's a uh, yeah great place highly highly recommend it
Right, so we've arrived in Bangkok and in traditional Bangkok fashion we got a tuk tuk I hope you enjoyed the Thailand episode. Um, I'm back from the airport in cold, grey, miserable Manchester. <laughs> but I really hope you enjoyed the Thailand episode. Uh, please like and subscribe to the episode. Um, really appreciate all the support as usual. Um, and yeah, it's good to be back home and so I can see this little man. I feel like he needs to be in the channel more than he is. Maybe we'll work on that. All right, super. See you later.